it hit the five day, it rolled over. It hit the five day again, you know, to be determined. But I, yeah, I'd like to see Amazon confirm higher, right? Well, I mean, here's, here's a couple of names. Let me just show you guys. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trading.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading week. A lot of carnage along the board. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, just a, a reminder, uh, Monday the equities markets are uh, are closed, okay, are closed in the celebration observance of Juneteenth. Uh, if you are trying to log in on Monday, you're probably going to have a very, very tough time. So enjoy uh, your three-day weekend, get some rest, uh, put in a bunch of work. Uh, again, we are all students of this business. It doesn't make a difference uh, if you're trading for 20 years or 20 weeks. It, it's, it's a never-ending journey. Remember, there is no finish line. There is no uh, trophy at the end. There is no time to breathe and kind of sink it all in. The markets are constantly changing. Technology is playing a big part uh, in its role. Uh, and the most important part is, you know, as much as you think you got it, you figured it out, it's all good, right? There's a big curveball that comes along and really takes away your confidence. And as traders, all we have is uh, our confidence. So continue to work, continue to, to be a better friend to yourself, have some me time, but the most important part is like we say every single day, especially towards the end of the video, continue to stay in business and buy uh, your time, especially if you are a, a new trader. So let's talk about the week. Um, so Wednesday, we had the 75 base, uh, basis point hike. Uh, this was something in the previous uh, six sessions that Powell said wasn't going to happen, but they feel like, well, it needed to happen. That was a rumor it was gonna happen and da 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 da, -da. It finally happened uh, on Wednesday. Uh, the good news, well, I guess good news, bad news, going forward, he doesn't see another aggressive, uh, aggressive hike. He said, maybe there was hinting there's maybe one coming in July, but the most important part is they feel like this is the more, uh, this is the most of the aggressive uh, moves uh, from the Fed. The most important part is our fearless leader, no names, right? Our fearless leader uh, continues to tell us how great the economy is, okay? We get it, right? It's, it's the market continues to be great. Uh, the, the employment numbers are great. Everything is great. Gas prices are great. Inflations are great. The cost of living is great. Apparently, that somebody didn't tell that to the equities markets. If you look uh, at what we had uh, as our final scoreboard towards the end of the week, you know, you saw some pretty big moves. Yeah, S&P uh, plunged 5.8%. This is the biggest move down uh, since the pandemic March uh, 2020 lows. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, the Dow and the S the Dow and the Nasdaq lost. A little less than five percent. That's kind of a big deal, and considering uh, that we rallied on Friday, those numbers would have been uh, even uh, more uglier. I, I think the bigger, you know, if you're looking for direction, if you're looking for some sort of like light at the end of the tunnel, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come this weekend. Let me let me tell you why. I, I think for any market, and I think we could all agree with this, whether you're trading for two minutes or or, or fifty years. I think that the, the hottest thing about a hot market, or even a market that is going higher is speculation, right? I think we could all agree. When you see a stock, for example, go from two to 50 and people are chasing it, that's called good, right? It's called it's called uh, greed, it's called uh, speculation. That's where the speculation money. So no market that ever is gonna have a stock going from two to 50 every single day is going to be considered a capitulation market. So when you have, when you take right now, re realistically the last, what, five years, the biggest speculation market out there, which is the crypto market, right? The stock market has been here for years and years and years, but the real crypto market from the mass public has been, you know, pretty popular. I would say probably in the last three to five years, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and all these alternative coins. Not that I am by far, I'm probably the most less novice uh, speaker about the subject, but but it, again, Bitcoin represented speculation money. Ethereum and all these alternate coins and NFTs and the metaverse all represents uh, speculation. So there is not speculation, especially from the demographics. Re remember, keep this in mind. The majority of people that are investing or speculating in NFTs, 
uh, in NFTs, crypto, and the other. I'm saying majority. I'm not saying all, but the majority are in that in that demographic from like 16 to 25. I think we could all uh, agree on that. And if if that market is being liquidated right now, and right now uh, I'm talking, I'm just looking at my phone right now. You have uh, Bitcoin right now at 19,170. Ethereum dropped uh, below a thousand. And there is rumors that there are funds out there, and this is kind of a you know the most important part. There, there's rumors that are out there that. There, if there is a forced liquidation by the key quote unquote players in the crypto market, then these things can really take a, a very big hit. Again, I don't know anything about the market. These markets, uh, again, don't shoot the messengers. And it's kind of just what I'm reading this morning. And that, and again, that will take out money from other places. Again, if there is no speculation money flowing into the most speculative space, speculative asset class that's out there, well, how can you be uh, how can you how can you turn around and say, well, the market is going to bottom out this week. Everything will be fine. It, it's all about the speculation money. It's all about people wanting to get in something badly. The FOMO. There is no FOMO right now. There's no FOMO anywhere right now. And the most important part is the, the key questions. And, and this is where investors and uh, especially new traders that started in the last three, four years, they continue to ask the question, well, where's the bottom? Where's the bottom? And again, I, I have to remind everybody every single week, especially in the weekend update, if this is the only video you watch throughout the weekend, that this is only, again, this is only month six, right? This is only month six uh, of this decline. And this decline has been pretty orderly, right? You can say what you want about the three to 500 point days, uh, the, the 800 point days on the Dow, the thousand point days on the Dow. If you traded in this bear market versus the bear market from 2007 to 2009, you know there's an extreme difference between this market. This market's very orderly, okay? Uh, the very orderly, very methodical. Yeah, it'll have its days, its aggressive sell offs into the close, but all, all in all, it's pretty organic, right? And, and, and it, believe me, I, I've traded through 2007, 2009. That shit was incredibly hard. I mean, really, really tough because again, you had the biggest thing right in front of you and that was a potential collapse, right? Collapse of the financial system. It's a little bit different than we have now. Yes, we could be bleeding a little by little, but you weren't having major banks going out of business on a daily basis, like a Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, so forth and so on. So it's a lot different. And oh, by the way, the up days, right? You, you're going to have one day a week, you know, two days out of two weeks, that you're gonna have some pretty good updates as well, like we saw on Friday, which it, which was a nice orderly kind of a melt up on Friday. So it's different, it's a lot different. We're not talking, you know, you know, you're talking about apples and hand grenades here. Anybody who's traded through 2007, 2008 and filing out the generational bottom of 2009 will tell you that market was incredibly tough compared to what we're seeing now. But if you don't trade from the bear side, if you don't trade from the, you know, from the quote unquote dark side, a lot of people like to point it, you're gonna have a troubles e either way because at the end of the day, no matter how much we rally, we're rallying underneath supply and that's the most important part. So if you look at any single rally for the exception of the rally that started on 314, right? This is the biggest move in the last six months, this three week channel and ultimately it got stuffed at the top of the channel and rolled over. But once we lost the 50 day, once again, you can see here every single rally kind of ended the same way. And even when the bulls got above the 20 day moving average that they couldn't do for three months, you know, it was a two week consolidation, gave it all up here. But the common denominator is happens what happens in the short term cycle. And you can see this every single time they, get stuck at the five day moving average, no matter how impressive the run was from the previous day, they kind of roll over. So this was the last one we had, what, three days ago, right, on the Fed. It tested the five day moving average, rolled over, and we had a you know, pretty good rally uh, on Friday, uh, you know, pretty good rally on Friday, got rejected off the five day moving average. If you guys remember the, the Wednesday video, I said, look, you know, despite this, you know, despite this move, and I'd like to see a second day run. Remember, I'd like to see a second day run. Doesn't mean we're gonna get it. M most important part of that video was I'm kind of very, you know, I'm kind of skeptical, right? That's kind of skeptical because again, we got rejected Wednesday off the five day moving average. You could take literally that recording and take it into today. Yeah, we had a nice little run uh, into the five day moving average on Friday, but, but, but Again, how can you possibly get excited? How can you feel all good inside of it? Again, if you if you have documented evidence all across the board, especially uh, getting rejected anywhere. Look look at the five day moving average. Anywhere off the five day got rejected here, got rejected here, got rejected here. How can you turn around and say, oh, I'm definitely bullish on Monday. The market is great. The economy is great. Crypto is rallying. Everything is great. Right? You can't. That's the most important part. And, and again, we, we, we try to, well, I'm not saying we. 
I try to record this video based on a, a non-bias, right? It's just, it, again, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear. I'm just, I'm, I, I'm realistic. I trade from both sides of the market. And when the market is above supply, right, or above demand, you go long, right? You go long and risk is on. When you're below demand, right, or below supply, right, and we are w way below supply, yeah, you, you can have days at the market rallies. But again, I, I said this time and time again, there's a difference between a stock moving up, like we saw a bunch of stocks going up on Friday, then the stock's going higher, right? Big difference, because if stock goes from 100 to 70, and one day goes from 70 to 73, is it going higher or is it going up, right? You follow what I'm saying here? So my point is going into this week, it's gonna be very, very tough, especially if you have any type of forced liquidations in the crypto market, and again, that does represent uh, speculation money flow, it's gonna be very, very tough for the market to turn around and be like, well, speculation money's coming out of this asset, but it's gonna go roll into the stock market. It's gonna be very, very tough to kind of convince uh, longer term investors or shorter term traders, then that's the result. Is it possible? Remember, it's always possible we could have a follow through, right? And again, like, like the same thing I said on Wednesday is the same thing I'm gonna say today. I would like to see a day two follow through, right? Because again, the problem is when you do have a rally uh, in a bear market, okay, the next day, remember, the rally was the stocks are closer to their upper channel for the previous day than the lower channel. So it's gonna take an extra day for them to get back to the lower channel to get massive value so they could break daily lows. So if you look, for example, names like Amazon, right? And, and they all look the same, right? If you look at Amazon, would you like to see a day two rally? Of course, because again, look what happened last time. It hit the five day, it rolled over. It hit the five day again, you know, to be determined. But I, yeah, I'd like to see Amazon confirm higher, right? I mean, here's here's a couple of names. Let me just show you guys a couple of names of what I'm kind of referring to. So uh, da, 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 da. let me show you guys a couple of names that I'm referring to. Bear with me a second, right? So you got names like Amazon. Is it possible to have a day two run? Yes. And I'd like to see Amazon confirm the five day moving average and test this area here. NVIDIA, you know, same thing, right? It's, it, the, all of these are gonna have exactly the same charts. You don't have to go through a thousand different charts and say, this one looks good, that one looks okay, that one looks good. They're all gonna look exactly the same. They all are going to mirror the NASDAQ 100. They're all going to mirror the Qs. So if NVIDIA looks like this and Amazon's gonna look like this, that means Apple's gonna look like this. It means Microsoft is gonna look like this. It means Facebook or Meta is gonna look like this as well. So it, it, it's, it, it doesn't take a lot. If they if one go, they all go. If one sells, they're all gonna sell. So this is a more of a, of, a, uh, of a reference point that if we are going to rally on Monday, and again, I'm incredibly skeptical of that, but again, at least I'm prepared. I wanna be in the names that if they do rally, I wanna have be in the names that can rally for four, five, 10, $15 and not 40, 50, 60, 80 cents. And that's why again, names like Nvidia, if we confirm, I'm interested. Names like Amazon, if we confirm, although Amazon is not the, you know, it's not the 50, $60 mover anymore. Like 50 cents is like a, it's like a Herculean effort. It's like it's like passing a kidney stone. That's what it feels like to get 50 cents on Amazon these days. But at least if Amazon could go, you, you could take obviously larger size. Uh, and if it starts confirming above the five day moving average, maybe have a day two. A name like Meta that had a lot of really good option flow come in on Monday, a little bit longer term expiration, but really aggressive six and seven figure bets. Again, same chart. If it gets above the, 50, uh, the, the five day moving average, again, maybe we have a day two run. So again, watch that as well. There's one, Couple of cool looking little uh, smaller charts I wanna kind of bring to your attention, guys. Look at this little stock, Allo. I don't know what this thing is. Look at the volume surge on this thing, right? Look at, I mean, nice looking chart here. Look at the weekly view on this thing, right? Look at the weekly view on this Allo. I don't know what the hell this thing is, but for all you guys who trade non-beta, keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building uh, above this weekly channel. Maybe this thing could go. Also, uh, a recent IPO. Uh, that looks interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Look at this BLCO. Obviously, it's not going to be a weekly view. Obviously, there's nothing good about that. But if you look at the daily view, right, it, it, it premiered or debuted at $20, went all the way down to 13. Maybe needs one or two more days. But if it could get above this channel here, maybe it gets a run uh, to $18, $19. If, again, if uh, the market is uh, pretty good, continues to act good. Uh, Tesla all over the place here, some good longs, some good shorts, but again, you can see the downward bias here. Uh, again, same play here as Amazon, NVIDIA, Meta, Apple, 
anything, right? It stopped at the five days. So if it confirms the five day, it's gonna go higher. If it confirms this macro channel, there's a lot of room down. Some pretty aggressive uh, put buying came in uh, this week. Uh, they came in for the 600s, they came in for the 500s, for the 550s. Uh, so again, it's gonna be very, very interesting. So going into this week, uh, I do like a lot of things long if they confirm. Again, I'm very, very skeptical they will, but if that happens, at least we are prepared. But if they start losing their bottom channels, obviously I will have no hesitation, start taking down the bottom channels and resume the downtrend. So that's it, that's it. Sometimes uh, sometimes you have to be a little bit more thought uh, provoking. Sometimes you gotta look at the chart as a realist, but the most important part is look at the market from the market that you have, not the market that you want. Guys, stay blessed, have a great, great rest, enjoy the weekend, and I will see you all on Tuesday. God bless, take care.